Hello again and welcome to the Orwell Astronomical Society podcast for April 2012. This month the days are getting longer. In fact there are two hours more daylight at the end of the month than at the beginning. But there are still some amazing sights to see at night. Let's start this month as always with the moon. Full moon this month is on the 6th with the new moon following two weeks later on the 21st. All the naked eye planets are still visible this month, just. Mercury is just visible still, best mid-month, immediately before sunrise in the east. It will appear quite brilliant, but will be very low down in the dawn. Venus continues to shine like a beacon in the evening this month, and it will be the very bright object visible just after sunset in the west, about 30 degrees above the horizon. This month it will start to show as a crescent, if looked at through binoculars or a telescope. Venus will achieve a brightness, or magnitude, of minus 4.4 this month. So what does that mean? The magnitude scale is used by astronomers to assign a relative brightness to each object. The less positive, or more negative, the value, the brighter the object. The Sun has a magnitude of minus 27, for example, whereas the full moon is minus 11. The brightest star, Sirius, is magnitude minus 1.5, whereas the pole star Polaris is plus 2. And each unit of magnitude corresponds to about a two and a half times difference in brightness. Back to the planets, Mars was at its closest to us last March, but is now rapidly moving away from us. That means it will appear smaller and less bright from now on. This month it will be at magnitude minus 0.7, still reasonably bright and still very red looking. Jupiter is now past its best and continues to sink in the sky into the sunset. However, it is magnitude minus 1.9, so still worth a look through binoculars to check out what the moons are doing. Saturn reaches opposition this month and this means that it is on the opposite side of the Earth from the Sun, and so presents the best opportunity for us to view it. The best time to see it is around midnight, around the middle of the month. It lies in the constellation of Virgo, which will be in the south at that time. The rings are particularly worth viewing around mid-month. They may appear to brighten over a few days on either side of opposition. This is called the Zeliger effect and is due to the relative position of the ice crystals in Saturn's rings. An interesting highlight this month, Venus will pass through the Pleiades star cluster, making a lovely sight through binoculars. This happens on the 2nd to the 4th of April, best seen around 9.30pm. The Lyrid meteor shower is worth looking out for this month on the 21st and 22nd. With no moon and a well-placed radiant, or the apparent source of the meteors, lying directly overhead just before dawn, and there is a good chance of a good display. Expect between 20 to 100 meteors per hour at best. Look towards the constellation of Lyra. Which leads us on to constellation watching. A nice grouping of constellations can be seen while you are watching for the meteors. The Cygnus family. The cross of Cygnus, the swan, is easy to find, virtually directly overhead just before dawn. Around Cygnus are the small constellations of Lyra, the musical instrument, Delphinus, the dolphin, and Sagitta, the arrow. All these are quite easily seen if you know the shapes you are looking for. Lyra is particularly easy as it contains the bright star Vega, which is exactly 0.0 magnitude. I hope that this podcast has given you some ideas of what to look out for this month. There is plenty more up there to see, and I recommend that you look on the internet, astronomy magazines, or in an astronomy book for a sky map to show you what else is out there and where to look for it. Listen out next month for May's Highlights. (laughs) 